fakery that we were able to perpetrate upon the enemy. We could make them believe we were coming in with an armored division. There was nothing between the German army and Paris but a bunch of rubber tanks. Setting ourselves up as targets, suddenly you realize that's the enemy. The 23rd Headquarters Special Troops, also known as the Ghost Army, was a deception army unit that was created to deceive the German forces during World War II. For 40 years, the unit's activities were classified, until the remaining unit members wanted to share their story. Some of the more, more famous members of the unit were Bill Blass, a well-known fashion designer, Ellsworth Kelly, a hard-edged artist, Fred Fox, a government official who worked in the Eisenhower administration, and Art Kane a music and fashion photographer known for his work in Seventeen magazine. The 23rd was made up of four major groups. The 406th Engineer Combat Special Company were 166 regular soldiers. These men handled security, construction, and demolition. The 603rd Camouflage Engineers were the largest group at 379. As the name implies, the 603rd was created to engineer camouflage for the dummies. The 3132nd Signal Service Company consisted of 145 men in charge of half tracks loaded down with massive 500 watt speakers, which could be heard for 15 miles. The 244th Signal Company consisted of 296 men who handled spoof radio communications. The Germans heavily relied on decoded radio. There is a claim that Ralph Intersoul was a creator of an idea of a mobile deception unit. Intersoul was a publisher who was drafted when he was 40. He was known for complaining about publishers being drafted and tried to fight the government on this topic. Much to his dismay, he was still drafted and served there for a few months. Then in 1943, he was sent the Special Plans Division in London to work on a collaboration between America and Britain plans. The division made strategic deception plans so that they would dovetail the British overall plan. Interso wrote, wrote that this collaboration led him to the idea of a tactical deception unit that would be on call for whenever operations were required. My prescription was for a battalion that could imitate a whole corps of either armor or infantry, a super secret battalion, a specialist in the art of manipulating our Antilles' decisions. He re referred to the unit as my con artist and said its creation was my only original composition to my country's armed forces. He went on to say, when I first dreamed it up, I considered it one of my more improbable dreams, but damned it, the Pentagon planners did not buy it whole. The way the 23rd deceived the enemy was by maneuvering rubber tanks, planes, and art artillery and trucks to make themselves seem like another unit. The rubber tanks were manufactured by Fred Patton, which weighed 93 pounds and were made to scale the tanks at the time. Four men were assigned to move the tanks to resemble an armored division. This proves difficult first because it's a, con a constant job of tweaking the position to make the tanks look real. A simple pinhole air leak could destroy the operation. A floppy turret could turn the whole operation on its head so that to combat this, the, the men would check the dummies. Another thing that could cause a problem would be if someone would see the, them moving the tanks by hand. This happened June of 1944 when two Frenchmen got into the American lines via bicycle and they witnessed four soldiers moving a 40-ton Sherman tank. As they stood watching, the Americans moved the tank to flank the line. One of the soldiers saw them and told them, us Americans are strong. That soldier was Arthur Shilston, who became a prominent illustrator, who was an official artist for NASA, and had illustrations in National Geographic, Life, Sports Illustrated, and Smithsonian Magazine, which is why the government was trying to limit the knowledge of the unit. Only the high-ranking Army officers knew that on the battlefield there were hundreds of men with, with rubber tanks fighting the war. The counter that Bernie Mason, who was outside of Philadelphia, remembers, was diving into a foxhole and lying in a pile with his fellow comrades, trying to avoid the Germans' artillery shells that were targeting a tank battalion. Some of the tanks that they hit were real, but most of them were just rubber and air. Some of the equipment the 23rd had at their disposal was tanks to mimic track marks on the ground, Trucks that had foldable speakers that could play to 15 miles, and troop trucks that would carry men in the rubber bundles of dummies. This would be additional to the dummy tanks, planes, trucks, and soldiers that they would be using. The tanks were one of the favorites by the men. They were easy to set up and maneuver, and they looked like the real thing. You may doubt that with rubber and air you can change the war, but in the Operation Bemba Brigade, the 23rd showed that in the face of danger, that they can stand their ground. In September of 1944, General Patton's 3rd Army rushed across France but got saw at the Lonsoyne River. When Patton was amassing troops that attacked the city of Metz, they left a 70 mile long gap in the line. The 23rd was tasked to fill the hole and portray the 20,000 man force of the 6th Armored Division. 
The tanks got stripped of previous emblems and were painted to be rubber tanks from the sick. The men of the 23rd were briefed on the history of the sick and got patches to fit in. They went in the surrounding towns and acted as officials for the sick, even the Major General the full convoy of jeeps. The Germans kept probing the lines of the 23rd, which made the men more and more on edge. If the division of German, German panzer tanks came to confront them, they would have destroyed the 23rd, which would open the 70 mile long gap. After four long days, the Germans retreated and blew up the bridges surrounding the city. Afterwards, some German officers were captured and were questioned. Many said that they got orders to retreat after the multiple probes came back saying that the 6th the Armored Division were coming and forming for an attack. We were lucky throughout. I mean, it could have been a lot different. You know, if, if the Germans had known who we were and what we did, uh, they could have just walked through. We had nothing really to protect themselves. We had 50 caliber machine guns on <clears throat> on some of the trucks and on the, on the half tracks and uh, we had our own personal arms and that was it. But an easy uh, combination tank infantry uh, thing they just blasted right through us. So we were lucky. All the bravery some of the unit faced criticism from other units. Bud Beer remembers being labeled as sissy by units coming through the front lines by the unit not fighting with guns and bombs. They were told they didn't make a difference but according to but according to army officials at the time, they saved thousands of lives by keeping a vigilant eye on every detail. Some of the men in the unit were shot at, and all they had were rubber tanks and fake artillery. They had minimum weapons at their disposal, but by them putting themselves defenseless to the enemy, they aren't being sissies.